Welcome back to the final part of my motorcycle cleaning and maintenance series. We've cleaned our chain, pre-washed the bike, removed the dirt using snow foam, given her a good wash, applied ACF 50 to help protect her from rusting and lubed the chain. In this episode I'm going to show you how to make your motorcycle look super shiny with wax and polish, how and why you should scrub your tyres and how to get your exhaust looking as good as new. I'll also show you how to check your engine oil and tyre pressures. So with so much to do, we'd better get on with it. So now we need to make our bike look super shiny and protect the paint. So do we use wax or polish? People often assume that waxing and polishing are the same thing. In fact, they have completely different detailing functions. Waxing is a process which protects the paint. Polishing, however, is what is done after a wax to ensure that the paint has that glossy shine. Since I've had my old full pot painted, I've used Meguiar's Gold Class Wax, but recently decided to try the ultimate liquid wax. And I must admit, I love it. Apply a small amount to an applicator and make small circular motions. It's brilliant for removing tiny imperfections in the paint and I love the finish it leaves on black paint. It doesn't leave any white residue which I've had with other brands. Maguire say this can be used on any paint regardless of colour. What you'll be left with is a deep reflective and vibrant finish. The wax will darken the colour leaving a richness and create mirror-like reflections. I would completely agree, I honestly love this product. Leave it to dry. Depending on the temperature, this can take between 5 to 15 minutes. With the microfiber buffing towel provided by Meguiar's, remove the residue. Now that looks amazing and I haven't finished yet but what I have noticed that I mentioned um, in the last video is there's a little bit of ACF 50 just creeping down the forks and just in the top of the frame there as well. So I did say that it could happen so I'm just going to get a cloth and wipe that away. Finally for this stage I'm going to apply some muck off speed polish which is a motorcycle polish and wax in one. It's so easy to use and it's super effective. Did I mention it smells amazing too? It is designed to leave a lasting, fast and easy water resistant barrier to your motorcycle's bodywork and paint parts. It also leaves a stunning shine on paint, chrome and plastic with minimal effort. It contains pure Canaba, the hardest naturally occurring wax for durability and beeswax to give you an all over glossy luster. That means it lasts like no other polish whilst working like an anti-aging cream, breathing new life into paint, metal and carbon parts. Simply spray onto plastic or metal parts, allow to haze and buff to a high gloss finish. Speed polish leaves no white residue and will have your bike gleaming in minutes. I've also used this on my bikes for years and it's great. Muckoff also sponsor many of the world's top motorcycle riders which is great for the sport. I should also point out that I have personally bought all the products I have featured in this series of videos. So once you've removed all the residue of the speed polish with this cloth, I then like to get another cloth just to remove all the polish from the frame. And then finally I get a buffing cloth just to go over my paintwork and give it that deep shine finish. Now if you have rims like I do, 
then you can wax and polish those too. If you have spokes, then, uh, well, good luck. I think I'll go and watch Lord of the Rings trilogy and leave you to it. Okay guys, that's it. Our bike looks and smells absolutely amazing. But we mustn't forget our tyres. So I recently contacted Michelin to ask their advice. And they actually said mild soap and water is what they would recommend. And as you know, that's a technique that I use There are a number of brands who make a tyre cleaner or polish for the walls of your tyres but as far as I'm aware there aren't any made specifically for motorcycles. All the products I know of are made for cars. If you look at the small print some manufacturers say not to be used on motorcycle tyres. As I say you can apply some foam to a cloth um, or boot polish. I've done both in the past but you just have to be really careful, just apply it to the wall of the tyre and don't get it anywhere above that line actually on the tread, that the area that actually makes contact with the road. Although I don't go right up to the edge here as much as I'd like to. Look closely at your tyres when scrubbing them down and check for small stones in the tread, damage and sharp objects which could be lodged in the tyres. So there isn't much rubber between the bike and the road, so just make sure that it's safe to use. Make sure you know your tyre pressures. Each bike is slightly different. You can look up your tyre pressures in the owner's handbook or on a sticker, either on the swinging arm or chain guard. I hate stickers, so have actually removed mine but I know what my tyre pressures are. Triumph suggests 34 psi front and 42 psi rear. I actually like to run 36 psi front and 42 psi rear. But experimenting with tyre pressures is a whole new video. For now, make sure you at least keep them inflated to the recommended pressures. Finally, we need to check our engine oil. Now, should you do that with the engine hot or cold? Well, you should really refer to the owner's handbook and see what the manufacturer recommends. For my Triumph Speed Triple, it says, an accurate indication of the level of the oil in the engine is only shown when the engine oil is at normal operating temperature. The motorcycle is upright, not on the side stand, and the filler plug dipstick has been fully screwed home. Now each bike is different. Some have a little inspection window, but this one hasn't. If you've got an inspection window, then that makes life a lot easier. So I need to now get the bike off of the stand. Now it's important that the bike is sitting level and not on the side stand. If you have someone who can hold the bike straight, or better still sit on it, then that would be perfect. Unscrew and remove the dipstick. Wipe off the oil and place the dipstick back in. Now immediately remove it to get an accurate reading. Make sure the oil level is above the lower marking but does not go above the upper marking. If it needs topping up, add a small amount at a time and be patient for the oil to reach the dipstick. Screw the dipstick fully home to get an accurate reading. Refer to your handbook for which oil you should use. So I haven't mentioned exhaust pipes yet. So we've given them a coating of ACF 50, so that will help keep the corrosion away. But if you want them super shiny, 
then be prepared to pull in some elbow grease. I use white diamond metal polish, some ultra fine wire wool, a cloth and a toothbrush. Apply the polish to the wall and work it into the pipes. I also like to use a cloth and buff away. It does contain some anti-corrosive formula, but I also like to give it a good coat of ACF 50 when I'm finished. So it's pretty hard work cleaning up the exhaust and your hands take a bit of a knocking too but I'm sure you agree it's definitely worth it. So I just need to get my ACF 50 on a cloth, wipe over the entire exhaust system, clean up my heat guard and put that back on. That's it guys, we're done. Now you can pull up a chair and a non-alcoholic drink and sit back and admire all your hard work. But don't drink too much though because it won't be long before you get all your gear on and get out and enjoy the ride. So now she's clean and super shiny, I'm ready to take her out to get some new photographs. In fact, that'd be a great idea for a new series, how to photograph your motorcycle. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out. And if you go for a ride, keep a shiny side up, won't you? Stay safe guys, and I'll see you soon. Subscribe, like, and comment. Hi guys, now I just wanted to apologise for the sound problem in that video. I actually broke a microphone, bought a new microphone and I had a terrible interference problem. But do not worry, I spent a load of money on a new lavalier microphone, so hopefully the sound quality from now on is going to be better than ever. I am laughing. No, no, it's not funny. <laughs> oh, <it's bad>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, quick. It's coming now.